Welcome to the Makito series from Tales from the Jar Side. My name is Ken Cousin and I want to show you in this video how to set up a project to use Makito. This will be a basic Java project and use dependencies in either a Gradle build file or a Maven Palm, whichever you prefer. This may seem a little basic to some of you, but it'll have the advantage of being short. So let's go ahead and take a look. So I'm looking right here at IntelliJ IDEA. You, you don't need to use an IDE to do that, but it'll make it simpler for our particular uh, situation. So let me hit the new project button. And in the new project button, I'm just selecting new, basically empty project. I'm not really gonna put much of anything in it. I will call this Makito Demo. Although I'll give you a link to the final project in the GitHub repository at the end. So I'm going to make this a Java project and I'll start off using Gradle, but then I'll switch and show you a Maven Palm as well. I'm using Java 17 at the moment. That's not required. Java 11 is required for the current version of Makito, Makito 5. If you're on Makito 4, you can get away with Java 8, but no earlier than that. I'm going to use a record in the final project, so I'll stick with 17, but again, that's just for my own interest and convenience. There's no requirement for that. 11 is the minimum for Makito 5. I'll go with the Groovy DSL for Gradle, and then I'll go with the Maven Palm. Of course, that'll be an XML. I think I'll change my group ID to com.cousinit, and there's my artifact Makito demo, so I'll say create. Now, IntelliJ, when it creates a new project, likes to set up a Java project here, which is what I asked for, using JUnit 5. Now, I do think very highly of JUnit 5. I do prefer that. I'm gonna update my version here in the build file, but since I'm gonna update the version anyway, I think I'll switch. So instead of using the separate API and engine dependencies, let me use the so-called aggregate at test implementation, so just JUnit Jupyter. That lets me get rid of the engine, and I could change the version number to the current one, which at the moment is 5.9.2. Let me synchronize the project, and everything looks good. Now, there's nothing in this project at the moment, but let me go ahead and add my Makito dependency. So, I will say new dependency, and I will search for Makito Core. And here is Makito Core. Let me switch it to test implementation and then add it. And you can see that I have org.makito colon makito dash core colon 5.1.1. So I am using Makito 5 and that allows me to get away with using Makito Core. If you're using Makito 4, the previous version, you might prefer to use Makito dash inline instead to use the so-called inline mock maker in case you wanted to mock final methods or static methods. In this project, I'm not going to do either, but in Makito 5, all of those capabilities are bundled into Makito Core anyway, so I don't need the extra dependency. What I do want, however, is also the Makito JUnit extension that is required in order to use the annotation support. So let me go down here and again look for Makito JUnit. And there is the Makito JUnit Jupyter extension. Let me again switch that to test implementation here and add it. And now we're good. So you see here that I have Makito JUnit Jupyter as the name. So there's the group is org.makito, the name is Makito JUnit Jupyter. And if I wasn't going to use annotation support, I wouldn't need this, but why not? And that's actually all I need. So I'll resynchronize and we're good. Now, rather than recreate all this with Maven, what I'm going to do is switch to an existing project that I prepared ahead of time that basically looks the looks the same. So let me close this project and reopen one that is called Makito Project. Again, to keep it very simple. And the GitHub repository that contains this project will be in the show notes, will be in the um, description of the video. So you see here, I've got my JUnit Jupyter aggregate. I've got Makito Core. I've got the Makito JUnit Jupyter um, 
extension and I also added the vintage engine. Now that allows me to run JUnit 4 tests even in a JUnit 5 project. Now I don't have any JUnit 4 tests, I just thought I'd show how easy it is to add it. And if you're still on Makito 4 you can do that as well. Now here is the corresponding POM, the POM.XML file again in the root of my project here. I also added a Maven wrapper but let me show you this. So the POM has a model version, a group ID, an artifact ID, and a version, but there's no parent or anything like that. I did allow it to set the version number of Java to 17. Again, I could use 11 if I wanted, but I'm using 17 at the moment. And here are the same dependencies we saw in the Gradle build file. So org.makito group ID, there's Makito core with the version and test scope. Here's the JUnit Jupyter extension. Again, same version and test scope. Here is the JUnit Jupyter aggregate, 5.9.2 and test scope. And then finally, in case you want it, there's the vintage engine as well. These were not necessary, but it's very common to add in the Surefire plugin to support extra testing and the Maven compiler plugin. So again, none of that was absolutely required, but it does work. And in case you wanted to see the Maven approach to it. Now I have several classes in here. I'm going to go through all that in another video. I don't want to take too much time in this one. I'll just point out that I've got a product class that is in fact a record. I have a repository interface that saves or gets the product from the whatever persistence I am storing it under and saves one if necessary. And then this is what I'm going to use Makito for is to mock the repository. And then I have a service that uses the repository and can save a whole series of products or get a whole series of products and save a whole series of products. And finally, here's my test for all that. Now I've got a fair amount of code here, which is why it needs tests. So let me execute my service test here just to demonstrate that it will in fact let me make a mock of the repository, inject it into the service class and write tests for products that I know exist products that I know don't exist, save a series of products, and all of those work just fine, as you can see. So everything's good there. The code is in a GitHub repository, which again, I'll put a link to in the description. And otherwise, that's pretty much it. So thank you very much for your attention, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.